Greetings, dear friends. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome once again to worship. If you are a member of Messiah Lutheran Church, we welcome you. And if you are not a member and watching are watching from another location, no, this is church. We are gathered as the body of Christ, and you are welcome here. In today's gospel, the risen Christ appears to all the disciples and offers them the gift of peace. Even amid doubts and questions, we experience the resurrection in our Sunday gathering around the Word and in our everyday lives. Throughout the coming Sundays of Easter, the first two readings will be from the Acts of the Apostles and the first letter of Peter. Even as the new early Christians proclaim the resurrection, we rejoice in the new birth and a living hope that we receive in baptism. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched. You gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in baptismal fonts, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give, give us the life only you can give. That you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held by in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness 
with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, 
the salvation of your soul. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first. Ooh. See, he has given us a new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Christ. from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house of the disciples had not had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Are you a skeptical person? Do you believe everything you hear right away? Or does it take a while before you believe something to be true? The other day, I got an email from someone who said that he was my long lost relative. He was in jail somewhere in Kenya and needed me to send $5,000 to the First International Bank of Africa for his bail. Should I believe that email or should I be skeptical? Well, I hope it wasn't a long lost relative because I just deleted the email. For almost 2,000 years, Christians have been saying that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. Do you believe it? A lot of people don't. A lot of people are skeptical. Nothing is sure except death and taxes, people like to say. But what about the resurrection of Jesus? 
A Christian might say that nothing is sure but death and taxes and the resurrection from the dead, as well as all of the promises that are in the Bible. Do you believe that? Or do you doubt? Today, we'll take a look at a portion of John's Gospel where Jesus talks to us about doubt. And we're going to see what the one and only cure for doubt is, as St. John the Evangelist describes it. In today's Gospel reading from John, we find the disciples huddled together on Easter night. They were locked up in a house. They were probably tired, but more than that, they were afraid. Just a few days ago, they had witnessed Jesus' execution. And now, people are saying that they saw him alive. And then suddenly, Jesus stood among them, and everyone was overjoyed, except for one disciple, and that was Thomas. He wasn't with them that night, and when he came back later and they told him that they saw Jesus alive, he was skeptical. I won't believe it, he said. I need to see Jesus with my eyes, and I need to touch Jesus' wounds with my hands. I need physical proof. Otherwise, I just will not believe it. Why was Thomas so skeptical? You see, Thomas didn't want to get fooled again. For three years, he had followed Jesus and thought that Jesus was the Messiah. But then he saw things and heard things that made him feel like something was just not quite right. He saw Jesus arrested, even though he was all-powerful. He saw Jesus tortured and crucified, even though Jesus could raise people from the dead. None of this made any sense to Thomas. Everything he saw contradicted what he believed. And he wasn't about to go through that again. He wanted proof. This time last year, on the second Sunday of Easter, April 28th, 2019, when we were celebrating in our beautifully decorated church building, listening to the same story about Thomas and the other disciples, with lilies on the altar, organ music, and choirs, could anyone have ever imagined that in just one year later, we too would find ourselves locked up in our houses, some of us in fear, others among us anxious? Some may have doubts about the need for social distance. Others may have wondered if this trial will ever end. Have you ever struggled with doubt? I had questions about what people thought about Christianity and where their doubts might lie. And after I graduated from college back in 2002, I spent some time teaching theology in high school. During one of the lessons, I surveyed the students in my Christology class at Alter High School in Kettering, Ohio, about their questions and doubts regarding their Christian faith and their belief in Jesus being the Son of God. The number one thing that they worried about was if they believed the right thing. Among their questions were, is Christianity really the right religion? Are these things that I believe about Jesus really true? The resurrection, eternal life in heaven. Sometimes I have doubts, the students wrote. Do you ever have doubts? What causes doubt? Thomas doubted because of the trials and troubles that he witnessed during Jesus' suffering and death. And that still is the number one cause of doubt today. Trouble, difficulty, hardships, pretty much like the feelings aroused in each and every one of us when dealing with this global pandemic. It is easy to believe in the resurrection of Jesus on Easter morning if you are in a church where all things are well, but it could probably be quite hard to believe in the resurrection if you find yourself or someone that you love in the ER or ICU suffering from COVID-19. It's easy to believe in Jesus when everyone around you is singing, I know that my Redeemer lives. But it's hard to believe when you're surrounded by people who don't believe in anything, and everyone thinks that you're foolish for being a Christian. When difficulties and hardships enter our lives, faith is tested, and we can struggle with doubt. On this side of heaven, you can't really avoid it. My purpose today is not to teach you how to avoid struggles and doubts. What I'd like to do is suggest what to do when you do have doubts. What do you do? Where do you go? 
what is the cure? In 33 AD, the cure was simple. Just spend time with the risen Jesus. A week after Thomas doubted, Jesus appeared to him and forgave him. He showed Thomas his hands and his sides, the very wounds Jesus received when he paid for Thomas's and our sins. Stop doubting and believe, Jesus told him. And just like that, Thomas's doubt went away. My Lord and my God, he told him. Here is the only place in the Bible that someone flat out calls Jesus my God. No more doubting for Thomas. Someone once said, those who doubt most and yet strive to overcome their doubts turn out to be some of Christ's strongest disciples. Doesn't that sound like Thomas? Today, Jesus wants us to believe without proof. Because you have seen me, you have believed, he said to Thomas. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. He's talking to us, to you and I in that verse, not seeing and yet believing. And so for us today, what is the cure for doubt? How can we believe without seeing? Thomas touched the physical wounds of Christ. You and I can touch the wounds of Christ every time that we are able to partake in the Lord's Supper. Thomas was able to look Jesus in the eye. Today, you and I can look Jesus in the eye every time we read the Bible or hear its word preached and taught. And what do we see when we read the Bible? What do we experience when we partake in the Lord's Supper? We see a Savior who looks at us with eyes of love. We see a Savior who knows all about our doubts and fears and unanswered questions, and yet he says to us, peace be with you. But look at all my problems, we say. Look at my sacrifice for you, Jesus says. Here in the gospel, we see a Savior who forgave Thomas for his unbelief. And still today, Jesus keeps forgiving us for all the times that we too have struggled to believe. The gospel writer, St. John the Evangelist, tells us that this right here, the word, this is the place to go whenever we have doubts. For he writes, these are written that you may believe. Not have doubts and skepticism, but believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. The secular world might say that amid today's crisis, Easter was canceled. Easter may be different this year, but it is definitely not canceled. Rather, let us embrace this distance and reflect on the similarities that we see to the disciples who were huddled away in the upper room in fear and trepidation. Jesus' presence helped them overcome their doubt, and they too believed. As we sit at home, apart from each other, locked away in our houses, we know that this too shall pass, and we once again will be able to meet and greet each other in person as we celebrate the Lord's Supper in our church building. For we also know that the church is God's people wherever they are especially in this time of the global health crisis. There may be times when you will doubt that God really cares about the world and those that dwell in it. You may be angry at God. You might wonder if he cares about you. Maybe you are doubting right now. When that happens, go to the Bible and look at the scars of Jesus Christ. Listen to his words of forgiveness and grace. Stop doubting and believe. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace, mercy, and... Through baptism, we have been made children of God. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the paths we ignore, O oh God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all who care for the earth you have made so that living things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the rooms we lock, O oh God, to those who live without a homeland or a place of safety. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, and all those around the globe who are suffering from illness due to the coronavirus. Those on our prayer lists and the names that we lift up to you now, silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the ways of love, O God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world and bless the efforts of missionaries, healthcare professionals, activists for women and children, and relief workers, especially those on the front lines who find themselves in harm's way. Lead those searching for a vaccine and a cure for COVID-19 in their research, guiding them to find a solution to the illness in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the ways of compassion and peace, O oh God, and be with those who are living in fear and anxiety over loved ones who are in the hospital and with whom they cannot comfort and console. Give solace to those who are anxious because they are required to stay at home and be distant from loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O God, as we remember those who have died in faith. Free us from the fear of death, that we embrace the peace you have promised. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray with confidence, using the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, 
we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthened dreams. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, bless the all public servants in this government that they may do their work in a spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice. Help them use their authority to serve faithfully and to promote our common life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, your healing power is everywhere about us. Strengthen those who work among the sick. Give them courage and confidence in all they do. Encourage them when their efforts seem futile, when death prevails. Increase their trust in your power, even overcome death and pain and crying. May they, may they be thankful for every sign of health you give. And humble before the mystery of your healing through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.